What's up, everybody? Couch Mills here, coming at you with a brand new Halo Infinite video. And in this video, we're going to be breaking down how to dominate in every ranked mode, from Slayer to Stronghold, Capture the Flag, and Oddball. Each one of these needs to incorporate specific strategies if you want to dominate them every single time. But a new study has revealed that people who don't smash the subscribe button have a 10% higher chance to bold. So if you don't want to be angry and bold like my boss is, you got to smash that like and subscribe. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now, the first mode that we actually got to talk about is Slayer, and Slayer is pretty easy. You just got to get more kills than the enemy team. However, it's actually deeper than it first appears. The biggest mistake that people make is running in and trading all the time, or to put it in simple terms, they get a lot of kills, but they die a lot as well. Remember, the goal of Slayer is to get as much value per life as possible. This means high kills and very little deaths. Now, there's a lot of ways to do this, but the most important thing that you should be doing is consistently contesting these power weapons because they have the capability of getting you multiple kills with, you know, your single life, right? The spanker can get you up to two kills and then you can get another kill taking a 1v1 or trading and then that's three kills for the price of one life. Overshield is easily going to allow you to get at least two kills and a lot of these weapons can give you a strategic advantage in a 1v1 like thruster and many other abilities. Power weapons and power items on the map is also the reason why you can't take a slight advantage in kills and then just camp with your team because enemies are going to be able to get all these powerful weapons and they're going to be able to leverage them to fight y'all when y'all are camped and just basically mop y'all up for free. Also, you got to understand that this is very team fight oriented, as are most of these modes, meaning that if you fight as a full fighting force, you know, 4v4, then you're more likely to win a fight because have you ever been in a fight where you're a single person up against three people? Yeah, most of the time you're not going to get even a single kill. And that's why it's so important to be contributing to an overwhelming team fight. If your teammates are in a fight, you should be joining in that fight as well. And also, if you end up getting a pick, let's say you get one or two picks, it is a great idea to push in and collapse on the rest of the enemy team so that you can really finish them off and get a full team wipe because those kills are basically for free because you already have an advantage. If you force a team fight with them, they're not going to be able to do very much about it. Now, the next thing that we got to talk about is Stronghold. This is a mode that can be pretty difficult and definitely frustrating if you don't know these strategies. The biggest mistake that people are making when they're playing Stronghold is they are completely disorganized and basically just going around the world. So they spawn, they grab a point, they run to the next point, they die, they spawn, they run to the next point and it's like a constant rotation where they're never grouping up with their team they have no idea where the enemy is and what's going to happen here is oftentimes you're going to go try to contest a point by yourself and you're going to go try to wrap to a point where there's still enemies there and enemies are going to catch you off during your transition and you're not basically getting any information about where enemies are you're not fighting with your team and what's going to happen is you're going to die for free at some point and the enemies are going to be able to get two or even three objectives now the first thing that you need to understand about stronghold is you have to control the center point this is the most important point it's going to be the b point no matter what on streets it's going to be that b point high ground on live fire it's going to be that b point in the middle all of these points are the ones that you absolutely have to contest because they are the ones that are the closest to either a or c and it's very difficult to control both a and c on any of the maps because they're much farther away also, if we take the map Live Fire, for example, you can see that just outside of the A point, you have an angle where you can contest B, and just outside the C point, you have the high ground bridge that you can contest B as well. This is why if you can control it and then put pressure into enemies trying to take over or contest that space, then you're gonna be able to have some really easy team fights if enemies aren't disciplined with the way that they're fighting you. On top of that, one thing that you need to not do, especially if you spawn and you see an objective and you're like, hey, I'm gonna go grab it. Don't unnecessarily touch the objective until you know that there's no enemies nearby. This happens all the time where someone will spawn near an objective. They're like, hey, I'm gonna go run up or they run up to an objective and and no one's there they're like hey i'm gonna touch it they touch it and then like three people come out of nowhere and they just get fucking rolled right i know that this has happened to you as well it's really important that at least for the close angles you're clearing you're making sure that there's no enemy right nearby and you have a better idea of where enemies are because you got to understand that when you touch that objective enemies get information of exactly where you are and you have no idea where they're at and they're probably going to be able to get first shot on you and kill you even if it's just in a 1v1 now another thing that you always need to do is contest the powerful weapons and abilities this happens so often especially on a map like streets where you both spawn in both teams one team grabs a one team grabs c and then you just beeline to b site right well you know what happens 
items. You're gonna take that B site, you grab it, you're like, oh, I'm awesome, and guess what? All of you are gonna freaking die to the spanker that you didn't contest mid. It is incredibly important that these power weapons are not allowed to get gained for free, because if they do, it doesn't matter that you have the objective for a couple of seconds, you're gonna lose it right away. Now imagine you fight, you let the enemy take B, you fight for spanker, you use it in order to take back B side while getting a lot of kills, and maybe you also get control of shotgun, and maybe you also only needed to use one rocket on spanker. Now all of a sudden you get to use the second rocket to win the preceding fight, and you have shotgun that makes it way more difficult for enemies to push upstairs, and now you get to snowball that one initial fight and that little bit of points that you gave the enemy into multiple fights down the road and many more percentage points. Do not allow enemies to just contest these weapons for free or you're just going to get snowballed just like that. Now the last tip I have for you on Stronghold is that you're going to want to contest many times but not fight. And let me give you a perfect example of this. Let's say that we're on live fire, right? And your team controls A site and they control B site. But then enemies come on to B site trying to take it and you're an individual. Now what you could do is try to fight them, right? You go to the back of site, you go inside the little hole in the middle and you're trying to fight enemies but what happens if you die? Now your allies that are on A site or on the connector from A to mid, they cannot see the enemy as they cap the point. If instead you would have just tucked in on the outside where you're still contesting the point, enemies literally have to go out and clear you. And the thing is, if they try to do that, you have teammates that are going to be from that mid connector and from a garage that can contest. So this basically forces enemies to take a fight that they don't want to do if they want to get you off the point. And your objective is not to fight and kill. Your objective is to be as hard to clear as as possible so you're not fighting in open space you're tucking in and just contesting and holding because as long as you have control of that objective it's the enemy's job to make first move which forces them into a position that they just don't want to be in now the next game mode that we got to talk about is capture the flag and the biggest mistake that i see on capture the flag is people that want to grab that flag and just you know run it all the way to the freaking goal like they just want to cap that shit right they don't care about anything else, but you know what happens 99% of the time when they try to do that? They just get freaking beamed like crazy. The most important thing that you need to do when you're trying to play capture the flag is control the center high ground, and that allows you to control the pathing of not only the flag, but the pathing to a lot of the power weapons. Let's take Aquarius, for example. If you or two allies are controlling top mid in the middle right next to invisibility, now any enemy that wants to contest the flag carrier has to deal with these people on high ground that get to poke them for free. On top of that, not only are you going to be able to contest them on the enemy side of the map, but you're also going to be able to help them secure it as you go back to your side of the map as well. On top of that, as you cap, you're going to be able to grab the invisibility and then the people that cap get to rotate back to that top ground mid and y'all get to go make a play for the flag with invisibility. And you got to understand that if you can control the pathing to and from the power weapons in the flag, that is how you consistently win capture the flag now that means that it's going to be different depending on the map for example behemoth the things that you need to control are the two towers on both sides of the map having one tower is really great if you have a long distance weapon but controlling both towers means that you're basically going to be able to cap the flag for free because no one can flank a tower because the other tower mid is able to basically guard the other person's flank and it's just very very powerful to control these angles now on top of that items are crazy strong in capture the flag especially an item like grapple in optic versus cloud nine we saw examples of a team dropping a flag behind cover and then another ally actually was behind cover as well grabbing the flag with grapple so i got transferred from one space to the next without ever peeking the enemy's los that's just really freaking cool and the grapple in general is very powerful especially in capture the flag can't grab a flag if it's locked into the base but the second it's removed it can be grappled freely now the last thing that you need to understand about capture the flag is oftentimes you need to be fighting with your team periodically so you're gonna grab the flag and move it to one location and then you're gonna have a team fight with your team and the enemy after you win that team fight you're gonna want to move the flag a little bit more to another safe location and then you're gonna drop that flag and fight with your team Remember, the flag has a really long despawn time, and as long as you're in the circle, it's not going to despawn at all. So really, as long as you wipe the enemy team consistently and have multiple team fights, that's the way to cap the flag. Not just try to run it all the way home, 
because what's going to happen here is while you're just running it, your team is going to die and die and die. You don't have control of center. You're trying to run it home. You all die, and then the enemy are going to stop you from capping, return their flag, take your flag, and get to run it all the way back to base. And you are all dead, so they're going to be able to recap. And I know that this has happened to you in your games, so take it step by step, team fight by team fight, control the pathing, and you'll win capture the flag every single time. Now the last but certainly not least game mode that we got to talk about is Oddball. And a lot of people are playing Oddball atrociously. So let's give you some tips and tricks to dominate Oddball. The first mistake that happens all the time, it's kind of similar to capture the flag, and it's trying to hold and fight with the ball always. I understand that you have a higher melee rate of fire or rate of swing, but you're not going to get an opportunity to do this up against good enemies. They know exactly where you are. Most of the time, you need to be dropping that oddball and fighting with your gun with your team. Because if you're not, you're basically putting your team in a 3v4 because you're not adding any extra pressure with your gun or helping confirm kills. It's team fight oriented in the same way that Capture the Flag is. Now, that being said, Unlike capture the flag, you don't have to win every single team fight. Oftentimes, you actually want to play for a lost fight. This is a play for a reset. And basically what you're doing here is playing towards the edge somewhere so that if you're losing a fight, you get to toss it off the edge and have your respawners in position to grab the oddball once it respawns. Now, it's very important that you play for this and provide ample pressure because if you make it too easy for the enemies to come and clear you and force you to reset the oddball, then the enemy will also have people waiting to play the respawn. So what you should do here instead of just jumping off with it is as enemies come in, you're trying to fight, you're trying to win, and if enemies get too close, you are going to throw the oddball off and then you're going to try to fight the enemy as much as possible. Get a kill, put a lot of pressure on them, force them to regen their health, don't allow them to instantly pivot to the oddball because the idea here is that your teammates that died first are going to respawn first. They're going to be in position to grab that ball before the enemy can because you are providing or putting in so much pressure near the ball that they had to contest. Now, on top of that, the key here to winning oddball and winning a lot of engagements is getting information. An oddballer, for instance, could jiggle. Let's talk about streets in the police department, which is a place that people always camp. You can jiggle on the back side of the wall, gathering information down lanes. Our enemies coming from A point. Our enemies coming from the B side. Where are our enemies routing from? Allow your teammates to put in ample amounts of damage in them so they can't run in for free. On top of that, because every enemy knows where the oddball is at, players should not be all stacked in the same room. You're going to get grenaded out, you're going to get killed very easily. Oftentimes, multiple allies should be playing quite a bit off ball so that they can put pressure on enemies that are beelining to ball. So a great example of this would have two players on A site. Let's say one person is under and one person is on where the A stronghold would be. And then one person is holding the ball police department and one person is holding in that room, but still peeking or jiggling out of that room, shooting at enemies. So the idea here is that the two allies are guarding each other. And if any enemy want to beeline into police department, they're going to take a ton of damage from them the ball owner is going to drop the ball and him and the other person in the room are going to fight and if they basically send the entire team in there they can do enough damage and the people from a can basically collapse on them to try to finish them off and if enemies actually want to take the oddball room they really need to clear the guys on a side first but that could be very difficult to do because there's two of them the guy that's jiggling from police department can definitely help them and if those guys have secured shotgun or a powerful utility like the drop wall it's going to be very hard to do so so that's just a base level strategy that you could incorporate but there are a lot of ways that you can take this fun and apply it to your games to get really clean team fights while you're playing oddball and win fight after fight. Now last up, if the enemies are tucked in a place that you just can't contest and it's incredibly annoying to do so, what you have to do is group up as a team and contest the power weapons. Mangler, energy sword, shotgun, rocket launcher, sniper rifle, all of these types of weapons are the type of weapons that you want to gain because the enemies are tucked into a place that's near the edge or in a cubby because they're not going to have all these power weapons and you're going to be able to use these to wipe the enemy and then actually win the next few team fights as well because you're going to have more ammo or more uses of these weapons. Now, if you learned something in this video, you got to pay up and smash that like subscribe, but I really appreciate y'all coming. Thank you so much for coming by. I love your faces and I'll See you next time.